Next up on Piper's Dojo TV, we're going to talk about three semi-secret techniques that you should know in order to guarantee that your strike-ins happen awesome every single time. So that's next up. We'll see you in there. So in this installment of Piper's Dojo TV, we're going to go into the technical elements, okay? There are three key technical elements I want to show you today that um, will help contribute to getting a perfect strike-in every time. Now, if you're interested in a one-sheet of all these materials, uh, that's going to get the four-pronged uh, star strike-in method that we promote here at the dojo to get perfect strike-ins. Be sure to check out the materials that we have um, attached to this video. There's a link that will give you access to that PDF document that it's literally the entire system of perfect strike-ins that you can use in order to perfect things. Now, the three key technical things. Now, uh, let's get into it, but first let's have a look at an example of a good attack here real quick. All right, so there's three things I want you to notice technically about this attack. The first thing is that my hand stays on the bag throughout the entire attack. Have another look. What keeping the hand on the bag allows us to do is it allows us to maintain control over the attack. And so nothing is flailing, nothing is being slapped where, you know, if you accidentally miss the target or something like that might cause the reeds to misfire or you might not get the right pressure, which might cause an early E or something like that. So we keep that hand on the bag the, um, the whole time that we do the strike in. Now, the next key element of technique is that my thumb for my high A remains off the hole until my bagpipe is safely up on my shoulder and I've passed that point where I might risk that early chanter sound. Have a look here at our example attack and you can see if you look closely what's going on. Okay, now, why do we do this? Well, the thing is, if we accidentally did have an early chanter, it's much better to have a little high A sound than it is to have a nasty E or D sound before the attack. So, um, let me just show you an example of what, uh, what I mean there and how it's better to have that early high A sound versus that early uh, D or E sound. Check that out now. This one's a little bit more esoteric, but extremely important, is that we are going to keep the E finger on the hole until our bottom hand is safely on the chanter. And the reason that we do this is to make sure that we accidentally don't put our hand in the wrong spot, which might actually cause a B sound. Have a look at my practice chanter. If my E finger is up and this hand accidentally comes up and covers the wrong holes, we get a B sound instead of the E sound that we want on the attack. So have a, one last look at the example strike in so that you can see all three of these key techniques in action. Okay, and as I mentioned before, check out the link attached to this video to check out the entire STAR star strike in method that we have at the dojo. The PDF is totally free. We hope you'll download it and enjoy it. But until next time, I hope you really enjoyed this quick uh, demonstration pertaining to the three essential techniques of a great pipe band strike in with no risk 
of bad things happening. We'll see you in the next episode.